I'm heading into my second week of having COVID, which isn't fun. And I'm still feeling a little bit under the weather. And I've not actually painted in about a week and a half. So I thought I'd do something today that's uh, one of those exercises that's really simple, that gets you back into painting after a little bit of a break. And because it's coming up to Valentine's, I thought I'd make some Valentine cards out of what I'm gonna paint. So I'm going to do something fairly small, fairly simple, that's just about getting paint on paper and isn't going to take too much out of me as I'm recovering. If you already have ready-made cards, then go ahead and use those. Um, I had these nice red envelopes, which I thought were great for Valentine's, but the paper that went with them didn't really go with the uh, watercolour paper I want to use. So I've cut out some uh, pieces of craft card to the right size and then just use the bone folder to create a score line down the center of the card. That marked in there nice and smoothly. I should be able to fold it over. And smooth that out. So that should fit my envelope nicely now. These uh, cards are five by seven inches. So now I want to just tear down some of this watercolor paper so that it just fits nicely on the card and you can see a little bit of a border. So I'm gonna make it four and a half by six and a half. So I've got a nice rough edge now and that fits nicely on my card. I can use one of my little torn off pieces to, uh, to work out a nice colour palette. Um, and let's see, I've been really liking this colour at the minute. This is Potter's Pink. It's really soft pink and it's got lots of granulation in it so when it dries the pigment kind of separates out into um, darker and lighter areas. So that's fun but it's not very um, bright and vibrant so I can pair that with some magenta, quinacridone magenta which is much brighter and that's going to give me a much deeper colour. Um, I think I want um, more of an orangey red as well so I'm going to use some of this Venetian red and then I actually want some yellow so I'm going to use some raw sienna I've also got this colour here which is kind of new and I haven't tried it out very much and it's called moon glow and it's a purple and it kind of separates out into different colours when it's dry so that might be fun to play with as well so I've got my ready pinky colours. Um, I'm going to get some interesting mixes out of these. So for my first one, all I want to do is to create a little painting of hearts on here that are um, all linked together so the colours run between them. So I'm going to start at the top left hand corner and I'm going to work down to the right, uh, the bottom right, and I'm going to leave a nice kind of a border around the outside. So maybe kind of half an inch, centimetre, something like that. Um, not too much, but I want to give it a little bit of breathing room. And all I'm going to do is just to dip into any of these colours. I've got this one on my brush to start with, this, uh, this nice Venetian red, so I'm going to start with that one. And I'm just going to make half a heart. Let's wash my brush, pick up a slightly different colour, and let's do the other half. And I can use the tip of my brush just to smooth out the shape and get it to look how I want it. I don't want them looking all kind of perfect and neat, but I kind of, I'd like the edges to be nice and smooth. And then I could add a little bit more of that colour in on that side just to darken it a little bit and then I'm going to come in with something quite different for the next one so I'm going to 
do the next one in a yellow and as I touch the top of that hut to the one next to it I'm going to get that kind of pinky red blending into that yellow so it's not going to stay a nice kind of pure bright yellow it's going to be kind of contaminated with all those reds and things but that's okay because that's kind of what I want now I've got a little bit of space up here and I want to get another one in there and maybe this one is a little flatter because there's not enough there's not as much space for this one to to sit I'm going to get this purple and put one in here purple on one side and pink on the other and that's not a very neat line so I can just use the the tip of my brush and smooth that out and then I've got enough space in there maybe for a little one so let's put that in there I think I want a couple of dots of red in that one. Now I can go back here and start my next row and hopefully this, these will still be wet so I'll still get some nice bleed from these ones here. Still had quite a bit of that red on my brush so I may as well use it. But let's do some purple next to it and see how that looks so there's some bright pink in there And I'm really liking the kind of transitions of colours I'm getting across those three there. I can see I've got a space here that I could put a nice big one in and that's going to give me a little space in the middle that I might just put a little one in. But if I get this big one in first, then I'll have a bit more space for the small one. Join that up there. So, yeah, a little one right in the middle here. And let's just touch it to these ones on either side and have that come down into there. That's like more than touching. So I'm going to keep going, adding hearts and just finishing this space off uh, while these are all still wet and the colours can run between the, the different hearts.
So now I've filled up my uh, paper with little hearts. I'm really liking some of the way that the colours are running between the different areas. And this really is the perfect project when you haven't painted for a while and you don't want anything that is going to demand too much of your ability to draw or concentrate. So, uh, so this is a perfect first project back. So I'm going to um, put this one to one side and I'm going to work on a different one now. For this one I'm using a pencil and very, very lightly creating a grid. So for this particular piece of paper that I'm using, my little grid spaces are three centimetres wide and three and a half centimetres high. That gives me three across and four down, but you can work out your grid size depending on the size of the paper that you're using. And then I'm just going to paint a little heart in each little section. So I'm going to use exactly the same colours that are on my little sample chart here. Uh, this time I won't have the chance for the colours to run between different areas. So what I can do instead is paint half of a heart in one section with one colour and then pick a different colour for the other half. And I can do that left and right or top and bottom. I'm getting the basic shape of the heart down and then I can use the tip of my brush to pull out different areas that I want to be smoother, to be a different shape, to make the bottom bit nice and pointy. And then I can take extra colour and drop it in if I want more. I can also paint with water, so I can paint half a heart or a whole heart with water and then just drop some colour into it. So let's do that on here. So this is just clean water and I'm painting my heart shape with that. If I tilt the paper you can see that. And then I can take whichever colour I fancy. Let's go for this. Nice dark red because that will spread out nicely and I can just drop it in and I can drop it in one place or I can drop it in a few. Let's get the bottom of that nice and sharp, a little bit more in here and just allow those to bleed and I'll get some nice kind of swirly effects from that. So I'm going to keep going and dotting around this paper, just painting in my hearts in different ways. This one I can do the top yellow and then the bottom a different colour. So let's use this pink. So that's the painting done on this one, but I'm going to come back in uh, in a little while when this is all dry and just add a little bit more extra detail. For this one, I'm going to draw a little heart in pencil. And again, I'm doing this very lightly. I'm just freehanding it. And I can tidy up 
And again, I've drawn this very lightly because I want to be able to erase it at the end. And now all I'm going to do is fill the heart with little leaves. You could fill it with anything. You could do little flowers, you could do little circles, triangles, whatever you fancy. Um, it's just something really simple just to fill in that space. So you can practice first. So I've got my little torn off uh, bit that I can uh, do some uh, testing on before I get to my final piece. And what I want to do for this is to create a little stem using the very tip of my brush and then just press down one side and the other. Press down and lift up and give myself some nice little oval leaves. And I'm going to change the colour as I'm going so that they blend nicely. Let's try that one again. So pick up a random colour, use the very tip of your brush to paint a nice thin curving line. And then press the brush down from the tip and lift it up again. And you end up with a little oval shape. And you can do both sides of the little branch. Flicking your brush in different directions gives you an idea of leaves that go off in different directions, so you can play with that if you like. But the basic is just press down and then lift up. So now I'm going to fill in my whole space with these little leaves. And they're going to go in all different directions. Use the tip of my brush to neaten that one off a bit. So I'm just pressing down and lifting up. When you've completely filled your heart it's time to kind of look and see if there's any gaps and I can see there's a bit of a gap there and I can put a couple of leaves in there, connect them to a bit of a stem and then anywhere that feels like it needs an extra leaf or two you could uh, just add single leaves. So we could have one up here. Here. Or you could fill this space with little dots or tiny flowers or something like that. So I can use the very tip of my brush and put some little dots in any gaps. Just filling the heart up with little uh, tiny dots just gives it that sense of fullness, 
makes it obvious that there are no gaps, that the whole of her heart is filled. And it adds something that's just a slightly different size as well. Now this one is dry, I can go in with my eraser and just softly remove those pencil lines. Now my little hearts are all dry and I've removed the pencil lines uh, that were left on there. Um, and I can add in any details and things that I want. This is a bit of an optional extra step, uh, but this is something that um, I found really relaxing and calming and it's just to add patterns. So I've got a couple of pens here. I've got a black pen and a white pen and I'm going to just add little patterns onto these hearts really really simple ones. I'm just going to alternate between the black and the white. So the simplest patterns that you can do are things like little dots, you can do stripes, You can do circles, squares, triangles. Let's do some little squares on this one. And let's make them in rows. And then rows underneath so that there's like, like a really regular grid. With this one I'm going to do some concentric circles. And then some shapes you can use both colours on. So this one where I've put the little um, heart, the little squares and not that obvious. So I can go around with them with the black pen and just make them stand out a little bit more. So I'm gonna carry on adding patterns to all of these little hearts. So when you've completely finished your painting, all of your decoration that you fancy doing, and you've removed all of the pencil lines, uh, you can choose which ones you like and add them to your Valentine's cards. So I think I'll do this one. So all I need is some adhesive on the back. Which I've got plenty on, it's all nicely spread out. And then let's just line that up and stick it down. So there we go, there's my simple Valentine cards. Uh, if you give these a go, you can post them on Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. I do love seeing what you've made. And yeah, I really hope that your loved ones appreciate these. So thanks very much for watching today and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Uh, hopefully I'll be a bit better in the next video. So yeah, I hope that you've really enjoyed these today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.